Hello and welcome to an all new Marvel cast, Explosion Network's hub of all things Marvel, a place to talk about everything MCU and beyond from Avengers Defenders to Cyborg and Romulus. I'm Ashley Hobley, your Omega level host, and joining me today is Ultimate Kiri Marchant. Hello, it's me here to ruin your day at the museum by making you hear things. And the Astonishing Dylan Blight. Happy to be here and talk about more than Marvel. <laughs> more? <laughs> <laughs> yes, on today's episode, we're talking about more than just X-Men. We're talking about X-Men 2 or X2 or X-Men 2 or X2 United. There's a lot of names. What, what are we going to call this movie before we get started? X-Men 2. Uh, yeah, X Men Two is where I was always at with it. Okay, I think I think it was called X Men Two here, but in America it was just X Two. Done. I don't know. Save money on font. Save money on font. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, please be aware we will be freely discussing anything and everything about plot themes and any of the movie. So if you haven't watched it, come back later. Of course, it is streaming on Disney Plus. With that said, let's jump to discussion of X-Men 2. Doesn't it ever wake you in the middle of the night? The feeling that someday they will pass that foolish law and come for you and your children. Take you all away. Does indeed. a great swell of pity for the poor soul who comes to that school looking for trouble. What's happened to you? Don't you remember? You should have killed me when you had the chance! You should have killed him! Bobby! No! No! Welcome, Professor. You haven't told him about his past. Who is he? I can't remember. Sometimes anger can help you survive. Directed by Brian Singer. Screenplay by Michael Doherty, Dan Harris, David Hayter. Story by Zach Penn, David Hayter, and Brian Singer. Based on X-Men by Stanley and Jack Kirby. Starring Patrick Stewart, Hugh Jackman, Ian McKellen, Halle Berry, Femke Jansen, James Marsden, Rebecca Ramin Stamos, Brian Cox, Alan Cumming, Bruce Davison, Sean Ashmore, Aaron Stanford, Kelly Hugh, and Annie. Anna Paquin. Stryker, a villainous former army commander, holds the key to Wolverine's past and the future of the X-Men. This threat reignites the call for a mutant registration act. Stryker starts a full-out assault on Professor Xavier's mansion and school. After escaping his plastic cell, Magneto proposes a partnership with Xavier and the X-Men to combat his, this new formidable enemy they both have in common. Uh, Dylan, do you remember the first time you saw X-Men 2? I don't, actually. I'm going to be honest, I don't. Okay. Karen, I, remember, remember the- I remember the first time watching it was at home, but I don't remember anything else. Karen, do you remember the first time you saw it? Oh, I remember time. watching it in the cinemas again. Like, it was, yeah, I think it was just at the cinemas um, with family, with my dad, probably. Uh, I don't remember it, like, perfectly, but I, I, yeah, remember being there for this kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I definitely remember seeing the cinemas. For some reason, I believe that I saw an X-Men 2, Too Fast, Too Furious double feature. We went to see both back-to-back. Whoa, what a fucking two. Which doesn't make sense. Which that's what I think in my mind. Too Fast, Too Furious came out like two months later. So I don't think it meant. I'm just yeah, getting things mixed up, I think. I saw it it could have just been the same. <laughs> it, could, it could have just been the actual same cinema that we went to at two different points, but that's. You know. uh, Dylan, what did you think of X Men 2 on this rewatch? On the rewatch, uh, I think it's a huge step up from the first film. I think the villain is much more interesting because it's not, you know, it's uh, more personal, more, uh, you know, related to Logan. Um, I think the the dynamic between um, 
Magneto and Professor X and the rest of the X Men paired alongside the what they're what the you know this this movie pushing a lot more uh the whatever they call the actor whatever they're trying to do for the 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 X Men the mutant act or whatever um you know pushing towards this the to them to, to out themselves the mutant registration act or whatever the fuck they're talking about yeah um the, uh, I think all of that paired with the addition of um Alan Cumming as um Kate Wagner quite the Wagner or um Night Stalker of course is the, probably the Nightcrawler. standout uh, Nightcrawler sorry um then you've got uh yeah Brian Cox obviously as William Stryker is what makes I think that villain as good as he is in this film um I think the action scenes are a huge improvement over the first one in particular the way the the movie starts like that opening um scene is still really good to watch just with the you know jumping and disappearing and everything that's happening there is just so good um yeah i mean overall i think this is still one of the best x-men movies karen what do you think this movie is a lot more comfortable being an x-men movie and being a superhero movie i think it's more comfortable in knowing who it's who it is as a as a movie and, and knowing what it's like the writers and brian singer knowing the characters a lot more and being comfortable in the characters. I do think um, Hugh Jackman takes another step forward in Logan and then in embodying Logan well. It's interesting watching this off the back of X-Men Origins because it's like, okay, you're kind of reliving the same kind of um, story just from a slightly different angle in Origins. Um, it, it's It's good overall i think there's a lot to like about this i think everything from costume designs better um rogue still fucking sucks but <laughs> as a whole uh i i think the everything is a step forward um and yeah i would agree it is yeah one of the best x-men movies we've ever had yeah i mean do you know i mean dylan last week compared uh the first x-men with the first spider-man I think, you know, both of those series had this massive jump between their first film. Yeah. After success, they had the, the you know, the license to do whatever they kind of wanted, go as far as they possibly could, and they definitely did here. Um, obviously, it's a lot more, even more Logan-focused, I feel like, um, you know, um, with him, like, obviously, you know, all the Weapon X stuff and history and that kind of stuff. Uh, and him kind of, you know, helping out the school when the, the school gets attacked. We actually get to see, like, Logan, like, wreck shot. You know, he gets to fight some actual people. There's no blood and guts, like there should be. But, you know, he definitely puts his claws through some military people. And that's fun to watch. Um, yeah, I, th- I think just the scale of it is bigger. There's more mutants. There's different, you know. They, and they go to weird places, you know, like the the big <laughs> the big threat at the of the movie is William Stryker getting his son, who is a massive illusionist, to get Xavier to kill all mutants by thinking about them too hard, which is kind of it's in itself a crazy concept, but they make it work so well, uh, and like just the you know the little girl that he thinks is taking to Cerebro to go find the other mutants. Uh, it's so powerful and that kind of stuff. So, um, Obviously, Nightcrawler, great addition. I think, you know, that might... If we had have just had that Nightcrawler scene, that might have been enough to just have make this a pretty good movie. But then, of course, you've got everything else as well. Um, and, you know, props to Ellen Cummings to come in every day and at the time doing eight plus hours of, of makeup and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I just feel like the story around this is much more complex and very uh, more in depth and everything. Um, you know, you like you've got the Logan stuff, you've got um, Nightcrawler, then you've got Magneto in his jail cell uh, being you know drugged, and then uh, ma- the awesome you know plan to make get him to escape with a mystique drug, <laughs> sticking a bunch of uh, iron in a dude, <laughs> which is still like an incredibly terrifying thought of this guy having all this iron ripped out of his body got him. even just Ian McKellen's delivery in that moment of like his of Magneto sensing the more iron in the, the security yard's bloodstream and just yeah. everything plays out I'm like this is fucking awesome like this is 
it's you, you feel tense, you feel on the edge of your seat for it, but it, it's like it's perfectly orchestrated by Magnino in that moment and perfectly controlled, and um, it's it's yeah done so well. Yeah, so very important lesson there, guys. If you know a very attractive woman comes up to you in a bar, it's probably to stick a bunch of stuff in your butt. No, 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 Ashley, no, nope. probably not. Probably not. She That's wants not. to put a bunch of iron in you. Never entertain sexy women. North, East, South, West. That's how you remember, everyone. <laughs> I like to remind myself not to eat shredded wheat, but you know. Um... Yeah. Or never eat soggy wheat picks. But anyway, the easiest is never entertain sexy women. All right? And we all know that. Key there. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Other, like, I think they also do a good job of shot, like showcasing Xavier's powers here. And we talked a lot last week how he kind of came off like super, uh, you know, perfect. Uh, in this one, they're definitely showing shades of like murky history and like, uh, you know, uh, issues in his past. He's definitely not the perfect figure, you know, from the first film with, you know, his history with Striker's son and that kind of stuff. And, uh, him keeping secrets from Logan and wanting him to learn stuff for himself, you know. And also the opening shot of him in the just freezing all time constantly is very cool. How does he do that? I think he stops everybody's brain. Yeah, he like okay. makes their brains go, I'm going to stand completely still and forget exactly what's happening right in this moment. Like he presses the pause button on their mental thoughts. You know, but they're still breathing, right? Yeah. And the, but they of. just don't. Their eyes I mean, don't take in anything. The question, my, with that, what's happening when he stops the presidential address at the end of the movie? I think you're thinking too hard. Is does he pause <laughs> and then they turn <laughs> off the camera, and they all run out, unpause, everybody runs outside, they turn the camera back on. I so anybody who's watching at home, it just went blank for like. There's a very Five awkward minutes. edit there where they're like, fuck's sake, how do we oh, how do we get everyone in and out of here? Like, oh fucking Nightcrawler just they the, when they jump back, they're all behind the bushes. <laughs> yeah. Just crawling on the right house floor. <laughs> Don't look up. <laughs> um Yeah. I mean props to Brian Cox, I think, you know. As a human you know, he proves to be a very sinister threat. Like, you know, um, a formidable opponent. Um, how's he compared in this compared to his... Oh, he does, his he's not swearing enough, you know. All right, fair enough. Yeah. But he's, you know, he's bringing the same kind of energy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he, him getting his comeuppance at the end is sort of super satisfying. Yeah. Yeah, well, we got this, Wolverine! Yeah, but then he gets doubled down when Magneto like straps him down to a piece of wall. <laughs> fucking, fucking dope. Um... <laughs> <laughs> like a <laughs> fucking dope. <laughs> 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 he fucking died. <laughs> Big fucking gob of loser. water. Fucking destroyed his body. Fucking dickhead died. <laughs> dope. <laughs> I will say, I think Rogue is better in this movie. I would the say there's one. less Rogue in this film. <laughs> Which is a good thing, but she still fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just think she has got a little bit more direction in this and got a, like a team of people to bounce off of and a, kind of a clear direction in this movie rather than just being a passenger. Yeah, no, no she's much better in this film. I, but I think it's also, yeah, we see less of her, so... She still fucking sucks. That's the most annoying. That's the most I will say, part. we see less of her, but I feel like we see more Cyclops, and Cyclops sucks more. I feel like we see more Bobby. Yes. Yes. And Bobby also sucks. He also What? Sucks. No. He's good. Yeah, I think Bobby sucks. Now, I like Sean Ashmore. Nothing against Sean Ashmore. Or Ashley. Very, he's very good in a, um, a video game called Alan Wake. Um, but the... Uh, Was he in Alan Wake? In... He's in Alan Wake too. Oh, is he, I thought it was is just he in the his character from uh, whatever. Is he that... Quantum Break? Also. Quantum Breaking. Is he the same character in another week? This is. Uh, I mean, people have fan theories, but I mean. Okay, fair yeah. enough. 
Anyway, I don't like Bobby. He's just a little, um, he's a little bitch. What, because he didn't beat up his brother when he, when he called the police? Yeah, he should have fucking iced that. You it's think like Pyro him. was in the right there? That's what you're saying? Yeah, Pyro was right. Setting all these police cars on fire. Well, I mean, that's Hashtag at the Pyro time. Was right. you know? Parents upstairs holding their son like, you did the right thing. Yeah. yeah but, yeah. I enjoy Bobby. I think is is I want to say cool, but I feel like it's on the nose. <laughs> uh, you should have doubled likable down. Enough, you, you pointed know. it out and you didn't double down. Shows you how fucking lame Bobby is. <laughs> you know he's uh you know, he's you right. know who's cool. Who? Not Black Panther because he never freeze. <laughs> It's not even in this franchise. It's <laughs> not even in this franchise. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, I was trying to think of the character's name, but I can't remember. The fucking... Wow, with my fingernails, lady. <laughs> oh, Lady <laughs> Deathstrike? Okay, Lady Deathstrike. Sorry. Wow, with my fingernails, lady. That's a fucking... Jesus. Yeah, no, she's I mean, cool. yeah, she's all right. Do you know, when she was here the first time, she's just cracking every single bone in her body. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Ryan's like, I do that all day. I can have arthritis something bad. Or I can do this. <laughs> Who knows? Who's to say? Yeah, so massive is, fingernails. She does have yeah. like a, a sucky version of Wolverine's abilities. Like the fingernails are just... I just look at it and go... The same My how does the Antimanium she... come out? Sorry, do you want to go again on that? Antimantium? Antimantium. Antimantium. It tends to come out of a... Yeah. Same way it comes out of Wolverine. What the fuck do you mean? He has like, claws that come out. She yeah, just grows yeah, her fingernails it, really long. Yeah, but her fingernails nah, just grow from like underneath, that. I, not from underneath, yeah. I take it, right? But like, even then, and I even think this about Wolverine, right? That, like, for Wolverine, it'd be really fucking awkward to fight with those claws. The same with, it'd be really fucking awkward to fight with like, fingernails. You have you never, like, like you have you never, like... I mean, if you like, practice. Like, you, yeah, but you have to, like... You have to like slash or like punch, right? Like you have to slash or stab. You can't like hit them with the side. This makes more sense to me than this. This also they they both suck. They both are both like this is the video podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I think if I picture myself with Wolverine claws, I think with practice I could I could get that. You just, have, you, you, have you just need that, the like, regeneration you, in case you keep slashing yourself. Like, you would learn, you would learn, like, you would get that feeling of just knowing it like an extra limb, you know? You would, but I'm just, I'm just, I don't know, I think it's awkward the way around with it. If you had to pick, though. Also, because I think, sure. the, <laughs> because the huge, yeah, the, but, because the of course. what, um, yeah. because of what, like they could do with this time period and whatever. I think the way they make the claws in the movies always looks just that tad bit too chunky and like almost plastic a lot of the time. That it gets better, I think, as the film. I mean, yeah, it's better than like, the CGI like the... ones in Wolverine Origins. Yes, mm. it is, but it's not like I don't know, like the 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 comic book I think ones or like Jackman the... should have got method, but. Should have gone method and got him installed. Yeah, so he should have gone and yeah. had surgery, and Get Hugh Jackman gets claws in his arms. Got them installed, like just with little pistons, so they like mm-hmm. shove out of your hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What a weak cunt! I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. Anyway, you can host. You could host. The I can't remember what we was talking like, about, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> you were just talking about how Wolverine is a weak piece of shit. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the Weapon X stuff, really cool, like, you know, at the time. This facility, underground. Um, yeah, all the history and that kind of stuff, I think, you know. I feel like, you know, I will say Lady Deathstrike's death is really cool. Like, that's mm. terrifying. Just getting mm. filled up with that adamantium. Sorry. That's... Why did you pause for so long? I'm just saying. Just want to make sure. Just getting filled up. <laughs> you paused for so long. 
Or, or did it? Certainly wasn't for. Well, certainly wasn't for well, well, In slow thanks. motion, I was looking at Kieran's like eyes, just like. <laughs> Charlie, what did her wow. in? Oh, she got fucking filled up on Friday night, didn't she? I can just got a spot of filled up with adamantium. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we call it in it now, Charlie? All right. <laughs> it's it's cuz it's rock fucking hard. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Karen. So who's the uh, mutant of the movie? I think I have to go with with Logan uh, slash Wolverine in this movie because I think he uh, Hugh Jackman embodies the part a lot well, a lot more. We explore more of his character, um, and the mansion scenes are really fucking cool. All right. Dylan, who's the mutant in the movie? Uh, Nightcrawler. I think he has the best story, has the best introductions to the movie. He's really cool throughout it. He's really likable because you feel sorry for him. And um, yeah. I don't know. That's true. Yeah. He saves the constant. He's a one and done too. Shows up one movie, does it really well, really interesting stuff. Fucks off. He gets replaced by Angel in this series in the next of films. Movie. That doesn't really go well. <laughs> hmm. It's because Alan mm. Cummings didn't want to get all the blue paint all over again. That's fair. Yeah, I'm going to have to go Nightcrawler as well. Uh, you know, he's got that opening set piece, which I'm sure we're about to talk about again. Um, you know, he saves Rogue. He's able to jump into Cerebro, which he shouldn't have been able to do. Nearly freezes to death. Uh, yeah, the movie doesn't work without Nightcrawler, so. Mute in the movie for me. Dylan. What's the most marvelous moment of the movie? Yeah, the opening of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Short and sweet. Uh, Kieran, what's the most marvelous moment of the movie? Oh. Has to be the the Logan um, mansion fight scene for me. For whatever reason, I have the sound bite of Wolverine jumping off the balcony onto those last few at the end of it, seed into my brain. Like his like cry or his growl or whatever you want to call it. Like I have, the, I can just remember that. Even when I don't remember much of this movie going into it, I was like, I know that sound bite's in it somewhere, and it fucking was. It was in it. Um. And we get to see Colossus actually being really cool. So yeah, Wolverine's mansion scene. Yeah, lots of little cool moments for the different students. Like you've got Kitty Pride running through walls, or Banshee screaming at the top of her lungs, or the kid who can't uh, you who's know, wanted to change do, the channels. Do you know when I was a kid? You know, like the main army guy you see, not Striker, but like the main random army NPC that has the face paint on. When I was a kid, I thought he was a mute because he had weird <laughs> That skin. was his mutant ability. You could I change didn't the paint, realize but, that was you know, face paint. You had to wash it off every time. He could change the paint on his face. It was. I thought he was the Toad from the first movie. That's so did I, actually. <laughs> you did as well? <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm yeah. not even joking. I, I thought, thought he was, was the Toad. I thought he was the Toad from the first movie. Not that the, he was just some random army person in he face paint. like fucking um, Ray Park. Yeah, and I, you look at him and you go, well, anyway, I'm old enough now to look at him and go, okay, that's face paint. Why the fuck did you select that face paint for this mansion? This, the, but why is this camo in this environment? Like, it's always camo. Maybe in the outside. Yeah, I don't know. He's always camouflaged. It's not like he's John Cena or anything. We could definitely see him. <laughs> All right. Uh, my most marvelous moment is probably the prison escape. Um, you know, <clears throat> Magneto wrecking shop with those two iron balls that he rips out of the dude. Yeah, just wrecking shop, making this plastic prison feel like it's made out of tissue paper and then flying across so cool um how do we feel about the ending of the movie can i say what's the most can i 
I, just just for Jean Grey, and I was going to just call her having the most unmarvelous movie, because even if she's trying to hold herself back because she loves Scott, how the fuck does Jean Grey have a hard time fighting fucking Cyclops? Like you just don't. Like it's just you just. I mean, we'd already established that her powers were, or you fucking... you know, on the fritz. You know, she wasn't able to take out those missiles. She was having the trouble at the library. Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, but she. We'll say know. another marvelous moment is the plane crash. The plane's going down, and this jokes Magneto in the middle of a random field. How fucking lucky is that? In all the places it could have crashed, it was on Magneto's head. It's not lucky he drags it out He of the dragged sky. it down. What are you talking it's not, about? He needed to be reasonably close. land in front of him. No, he no, fucking... He needed to be in he line of sight. Of I mean, sky. he had to be in like a 50 kilometer radius or something. How many times have you watched this movie and you've, this, you've never realized... You just he... thought he that plane accidentally crashed and Magneto just happened to be there? You did at no point. You guys you... suck. What do you mean we <laughs> suck? <laughs> I will say Cyclops gets sidelined again in this movie. Does not have sucks. a good time. He doesn't get any. <laughs> if it, no, he just does it in general. Cyclops sucks. All right. Um, how do we feel about the ending of the movie? Jean Grey sacrifices herself to save everybody. It's just a bit of water, eh? <laughs> like... Oh, I could take it. Surely... Just have a bit of a drink. The... No, but like... <laughs> it's the fucking X-Wing. Like, the X-Wing's fast as shit. Like, why... How the fuck... Like, I just don't... I don't understand how she needs to sacrifice herself. Like... It, it just feels like it could have been a lot bigger for her to sacrifice herself to mean more to build into the Dark Phoenix thing. And it's like, yeah, good thing they're not going to shit the bed with Dark Phoenix not once but twice in movies. Oh, wait, they do. Mm. I um, I think that... The problem is, is that they set the, they give them a normal jet. There's nothing special about their jet, so that's half the problem. You know, the X Men, the X Jet is just it's the it's, jet. It's, it's the X Wing. Thank you very much. No, that's a Star Wars thing. Yeah. Um, no. But the the, the X Men jet. Luba um, Blackbird. That's something like Pretty that. Pretty sure. Yeah. It it has no specialty in this film, so the. Like they're stuck, they can't un- outrun missiles. But I do think, I do think, getting blown up over a, a dam is pretty fucking boring. As far as um, why yeah. was the dam blowing up? It was like because the dam's way sure. far away from the, <laughs> their base. No, right? wasn't it? The th- no, but the base was built under the dam, right? Mm. The base was so built up under the base, the dam. and then it, yeah, and then it, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like. It's like Anyway, um, yeah, I think it's whatever. She sacrifices herself. It's literally she just they just want to set up a third film because after the success of the first one, they thought they were going to make it more. Yeah, up. they just wanted to set up Dark Phoenix, forever. and they thought yeah. to get Dark Phoenix, to get Dark Phoenix, we have to kill Jean Grey off somehow. Yeah. Just disappear. Which yeah. I'll say the biggest <clears throat> bullshit in all these films is I think actually the romance or non romance between Logan and Jean, the most forced nonsensical. No chemistry. Shit. What they make They're it like, out in this one? And it, it's yeah, I don't care. It's nothing. Um, and then they they do it in this, and it leads through to the third film where it's even more bullshit. But yeah, it's the most forced no chemistry romance I think in any comic book movie. Well, like it's it's like you know, um, in the first movie, Logan just strangled her a bit. Sure, you know, like she was into it. Was, like F- you know. Fifty Shades of Adamantium. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, Jean Grey at the end of this movie, <laughs> wishing she was the one that got filled up. Um, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> she did. With water. <laughs> Whoa. Damn. Uh, too soon. Damn. Way to kill the vibe. Way to kill the vibe there, Ashley. 
Oh, I drove bot was working overtime. Anyway. All right. Any other thoughts on X Men Two? No. Nah. No. All right. I think so. Let us know what you thought of X Men Two by going to explosion.com slash Twitter or jump to Discord at explosion.com slash Discord. If you want to help us out here at all new Marvel Cast, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Podchaser. Leave us five stars, and you can leave five stars, or just tell people about the show. And if you've enjoyed this episode, thought it was worth a dollar, head on over to our Kofi page at explosion.com slash support. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, be sure to watch X-Men The Last Stands and join us next time for another all-new Marvel cast. Thank you.